Hey everyone, welcome to Build Your SaaS. This is the behind the scenes story of building a web app in 2020. I'm John Buda, and I haven't seen the sun in over two weeks, which is cool. <laughs> I'm not used to you improvising. I'm Justin Jackson. I do product and marketing. Follow along as we build transistor.fm. <laughs> It, it's dreary there in Chicago. It's miserable. Yeah, you were saying you might have to get out of town. Uh, it's just like endless. I mean, I think it happens every year. I should be used to it. But for whatever reason, this time of year and everything from the new year is just like just this cloudy dread. Mm-hmm. I think there's supposedly sun coming this Sunday. Well, by the time people hear this, it'll be like that's the big news here is Sunday is going to be sunny and 50. It's like <laughs> put on your put on your swim trunks, go to the beach. Yeah, people people are excited. Yeah. I wonder if you need to just create a repeating calendar item for yourself that says January 5th, get out of just town. GTFO. Yeah. <laughs> Where wherever that might be. Go go find yourself a, yeah. a treehouse somewhere. Possibly. Well, yeah, a treehouse with no roof and lots of sunshine. Yeah. I mean, it it yeah, it really does I think here we when we get snow, there's just so much to do in the snow. Right. That you also even get, if it's yeah, but it's sunny after it snows there, probably. Uh yeah, I mean it can get socked in in the valley, but we get if you go to the mountain, you're yeah. generally above the clouds yeah. there. Right. I mean, this is important stuff, man. I, yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of listeners that feel the same way. Yeah, if you live in the Midwest near the Great Lakes, I'm sure you can feel the pain. Now, the 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 flip side is during the summer and fire season here in the Pacific Northwest, it can be terrible. That's true. Just smoky right. and awful. I remember yeah. Yeah. I had just visited you... And then I was flying back into Kelowna, and it was like I was flying into the burning apocalypse of hell. Like it's just red skies and completely smoke covered, and and we're like, we're, I just come from sunny Chicago, and I was like, oh man, take me back to the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, everywhere's a trade off. I don't think there's anywhere that's perfect. It's either yeah fires or earthquakes or hurricanes or extreme heat. Or cl- yeah. cloudiness and horrible winters, and that. it's just anyway. Yeah, you just you just gotta you gotta move around. You gotta yeah. get put your laptop in a backpack, put your thumb out, yeah. grab a grab a ride, and just buy a and, buy a Volkswagen bus and just yeah drive around. around. For sure, man, you can do that if you want. It's possible. The transistor, <laughs> the transistor, uh, mobile. I don't yeah. Know. Office. I'll spend some money. I'll sp- I'll spend some marketing budget on that. <laughs> Slap a big sticker on the side of it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We we need to have uh, transistor Westies. We need to have transistor surfboards, transistor yeah. snowboards. Yeah. Uh, this is all. You know, all I did I did meet with our accountant last week, and I think we could probably expense that. Hmm. Totally fine. For sure. I mean, <laughs> it's marketing, right? Uh huh. <laughs> All right, I have a question. I I saw this tweet from DHH, and I do not understand it. Monoliths are the future. I don't. What is he talking about? Okay, I saw that too, and it is related to, I think something he's talked about quite a bit, and so, and a, a blog post on changelog.com. dot com. Okay, yeah. There's been a trend over the last, I don't even know, five six years. Okay. Of taking what are regarded as these monolithic apps. Like look, our, our app is a monolithic app. It is one code base that runs one stack of Rails software, right? Yes. Okay. Every time we deploy, we deploy the entire thing. Yep. Um, so Laravel, Rails. Yeah. All of the... By default, kind of- by default, those things are, I would say, considered monolithic, right? So if you're working at a company and everybody's working on the same code base and it's... It's every deploy is just the same. The, the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. It might have an API on it, but it's always the same thing. 
And Go is are Go apps typically more microservice driven? Uh, they could be. I mean, yeah, I don't know. This isn't necessarily related to Go particularly, but um, I just remember setting up a Go application on my computer and it was like, what is going on? It was like everything was a separate I thing. Mean, yeah, Go, I mean, Go is easy to compile down to these separate binaries that you can throw anywhere and they have like web, um, kind of have a web server built in. So, okay. so my, microservices, the trend, and I, I don't have a ton of experience working with this stuff, but I did a little bit yeah. at my last job. And typically you are, you have different code bases for different kind of pieces of your business or logic. Yes. So like you'd have an app that's like the storefront and then an app that is the admin and an app that is the API and an app that is, I don't know, like payment processing. And all those things are deployed separately. They all kind of talk to each other and have to know about each other. Yeah. And I think the idea was supposed to simplify the code base because each one mm-hmm. is smaller. Um, but from my experience, it's not, it's like more resilient to problems where if one goes down then not everything goes down, but there's, there always seems to be a central component to that. That's, you know, every microservice has to communicate to the same thing anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So here's my experience. I, I, again, I've only worked on one thing that was structured like this. It was yeah. a Go application and it was exactly like this. There was a bunch of components. They were all kind of independent and they would talk to each other. Yeah. But in my experience, first of all, setting it up was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it was not easy to set it up. And uh, the next thing was that that duct tape between all of those elements seemed very fragile to me. Like, there, there's always right. some, like what went wrong. How come this isn't running locally? And then you have to like go down this entire crazy stack of things to figure out. Yeah, how do you know where the problem is? And then if you're writing tests on that code, it's like for one microservice that might use another microservice, then you have to write tests that like stub out that other service and it's like talking to a fake service. Mm-hmm. It just for. So I think the 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 point of this blog post and other posts that DHH has written in the past is kind of trying to make the point that it's really less efficient to do it this way, especially for small teams. Like f- for us, mm-hmm. it's like me working on the app, right? I don't want to maintain multiple apps. Yeah. Even for small teams in the past I've worked on, it it can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, but if... <sighs> I think it kind of can lead to some inefficiencies and hiring a lot more people than you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could totally see that. I the again, just what from what I remember and setting it up and like trying to test things and trying to figure out how to deploy things. It, yeah, it just seemed really complicated, and I kept asking like, why, like, why can't we just, <laughs> why can't we just have this in one code base and then. You know, right. even even for finding things like right now, a dummy like me can go into my code editor and click find in all documents and then just like search everything for a, a little bit of content or code right. or whatever. And that just the simplicity of that is so helpful. Uh, I don't have to ask you like, OK, where is that thing? Like, where yeah. is it hiding? I can just go and find where it is and uh, I can run it locally. I can issue a pull request and it, it just seems like the process is simpler. I mean, for sure, for sure, you know, places like Facebook, they're going to, they're going to have to split off services. Yeah. They have to, but for a new company starting out, if you, I feel like if you choose from the beginning, you're like, we're going to do microservices from the beginning. It's just, mm-hmm. You're, I don't know. I feel like you're going to be you're, spending so much time on the architecture of the app and actual than the actual product. Yeah, you're over engineering. Whereas, like for us, I mean, we could. There are places we could potentially split things off into their own app. Like down the road, if this thing is massive, mm-hmm. there are, and but that's more for that'd be more for like efficiency sake of. I don't know processing analytics in the background or something like. Something like that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and this is interesting. I'll, I'll pay, I haven't actually read this, but this looks like an interesting take on it because Shopify has written something. They have one of the largest Ruby on Rails code bases in existence. <laughs> this is called Deconstructing the Monolith, yeah. something software that maximizes developer productivity. And I wonder what they ended up doing. So they have something called a modular monolith. Hmm. Anyway, I'll put I'll put this in the show notes too. Interesting. I, 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 the reason I searched that <laughs> is as you were talking about this, and then you're like, you know, if you're Facebook, and I, I keep thinking about that stuff, like because because people talk about complexity and power and all these things, and I'm I think my opinion now is like if you need that much complexity, then you're building something evil. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe that's not a universal law, but I just said it out loud just to see how it would feel. Yeah. There, there's just something about like, even, you know, I wrote this book called Marketing for Developers, and I, I kind of maybe naively wrote a lot about how people can set up user tracking and how retargeting works and all this stuff. And now I look back on that and I go, man, that was a bunch of marketing complexity and what do we really get out of it? Yeah. What do we get out of it? Did it make the world better to have all this this retargeting? Well, from a privacy point of view, definitely not. From a, a, a code complexity point of view, definitely not. Like it added all of this cruft to our applications and our marketing sites. And, um, and then from an efficacy point of view, it might, I mean, I know retargeting campaigns can work. But it's like this, ah, there are things that work way better that aren't like trying to squeeze the last drops of juice out of a lemon, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Like once you get to that level, you're, you're really like retargeting is like squeezing the last, last drops out. Not just like in a micro perspective, but a, a big macro perspective. Like if you're in an industry like direct to consumer, <laughs> Once everybody is doing retargeting ads and everybody's, you know, uh, marketing to you on Instagram stories and Facebook feed and Twitter feed, the the efficacy of those things, you're only going to get a few drops of the lemon because so many other people have squeezed it. Mm-hmm. And and the trade-off is that you've got to introduce all of this complexity. Yeah, yeah, that's what it seems like to me is especially if you're thinking about this stuff from the from the start is it's just introducing complexity too early on yeah like i can't imagine trying to build this and think about having all these services run independently and you know there's tools that are like self discovery so these your your some of your systems can find other systems on the network and talk to each other and discover when new ones are added and yeah it's just like I, I don't know. I just, I just thought of, like, if if transistor was big enough to where we had Facebook or Apple level data centers, and you were like walked into it and you just saw these rows of servers, you're like, this is transistor. It'd be terrifying. I don't want. <laughs> like, what are these things doing? And those what machines they, like all pulse when they when you enter the building yeah. and Hello, the, the building starts to shake and then it like electrocutes you and sucks you into the machine and then you're stuck there forever. Yeah. And then you're in the episode <laughs> of Black Mirror. <laughs> I I mean, I think one of the threads that's been in our show from the beginning is questioning some things. Questioning how big do you need to be? Right. Questioning how complex does your software need to be? Does your business need to be? And uh, actually, this relates to something we were going to talk about last week, which is this this blog post I wrote called uh, Margin, justinjackson.ca slash margin. And the uh, the one of the observations I made I, I I made is that typically, like when you're when you're in a squeeze the last drops out of the lemon situation your response is often to add more complexity, right? So there are certain industries, I'd say, 
uh, definitely like the make money online kind of sell online courses to people who want to create online courses like that whole market is running on marketing steroids like hmm. they're using every single tool tracking retargeting uh drip sequence automation sequence uh dynamic content like it just it's crazy and uh in my experience the that there there's quickly diminishing returns there uh and I, I recommend in this post to look for business models that have good margins with minimal complexity. Mm-hmm. Choose work that gives you lots of breathing room. I think it's something to keep in mind. Um, uh, oh, the, another thing I said, because I was talking about this, these two snowboard shops that I owned in my early 20s, and we were just like adding everything. Like we just kept adding more to right. the store, hoping that it would increase our margins. We we built a <laughs> mini ramp in one of our stores and and charged people to ride it. We did events, like we we would do like video premieres. We published a magazine. We ran contests. I started a retail collective in our town. We started doing bike repairs. We we were like it just we just kept adding more and more because we're chasing after like okay we got to make this business work it's like we're just pushing on this thing and trying to get the machine running you know and the way to get the machine running is just to add more parts and it was like throwing good effort after bad fundamentals <laughs> because because the primary model was lousy and adding more complexity didn't fix that and i think i just define i think i just <laughs> described facebook <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah. It's like when the primary thing you've built is just a shitty thing or I shouldn't, I mean, I don't want to belittle some of the, the small business. Like yeah, it, it wasn't in Facebook's case, it was just like they built a shitty thing. I don't was, know if the, I don't know if the primary thing that they built is a shitty thing. It became a shitty thing. It became a shitty because thing. Because yeah. they're selling you. <laughs> yes. Out. To advertisers and everyone, but it, it's it, it's interesting to think on both scales. Like the small little independent business person, like me, I was you know this was my dream. I was running a snowboard shop, and it, I just got um, into this vicious cycle of trying to add more things to the business, trying to make the business work. And the conclusion in this blog post is like, if you're in that cycle, you got to get out. Yeah. On the other side. There's these big, massive corporations, Facebook, Amazon, Twitter, and the complexity of those businesses and their tech stack and, you know, everything they're trying to do. I I think there's something, uh, we need to think about that stuff. Yeah. And, and I mean, we've benefited from some of that. I don't want to, I don't want to pretend that like like we use Amazon web services and there's some benefits there. Yeah, I mean we don't Yeah, we certainly don't have to use them. It's like an evil option, but it's there's other I mean the alternatives are not fantastic. Yeah. I'm actually cur- like I know Basecamp switched to Amazon cuz they used mm-hmm. to run their own servers out of a data like warehouse yeah, I, right i think at but, rack space or something yeah yeah uh and you know they talk about they talk about monoliths a lot and how they use them and i think their infrastructure costs are still really high mm-hmm. um regardless it it's not i don't think microservices are meant to make your infrastructure costs cheaper so like base camp will scale uh i want to say horizontally instead of vertically Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. they add yeah. more servers instead of splitting yeah. out parts of the code into something else. Yeah, um, which is fine. I'm curious. They've alluded to to like new things they're going to announce this year. One of which is a new a new product, but the other thing they talked about is they're going to release like some new development tools. Or I'm curious to see how this plays into the whole monolith talk, but mm-hmm. 
I feel like what they're going to do is release either some new stuff for Rails or some JavaScript packages that work with Rails that are kind of along the lines of of Alpine, mm-hmm. right? It's okay. like it's like here here's how we're going to develop, or here's how what we use to develop this new app uh, that we're making, and it's Rails plus this like interaction layer on top, which is which is based on maybe Stimulus JS, which they built internally yeah. or or something else or i feel like they they came up with this new this new way to build their new app that they want to talk about and i don't really know what it is but 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 there's going to be the addition of some javascript stuff yeah i don't think they're going to go like the one the single page app react route at all yeah but th- there's something something that they figured out works really well for them um in the context of like a monolithic app yeah interesting I I think these conversations are so fascinating because if you're technical, I think, and if you're technical and nerdy, there is part of me that's like super interested in like, okay, like how does this, you know, how does uh, artificial intelligence work? How do, you know, how does, how can data science make our world a better place? Um, and And so... Sometimes I think I do tend towards like wanting to dive into these complex topics. On the other hand, there are these patterns that that we have. Think about like like uh, LA's uh, road system, right? It started simple, and then they just kept adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. And what was once a simple way to get around is now this like complex hellhole of of traffic, right? And mm-hmm. and how did that happen? Did that happen just like in a year? Hmm. No, it's been decades and decades and decades of patterns that then reinforce new patterns and then what you're left with is this you know crazy complex thing. Whereas if you compare it to New York, and New York's transportation system's not perfect, but the simplicity of the subway and how easy it is to get around that city is, I don't know, it's its an interesting contrast that... Probably also speaks a lot to like, it's almost impossible to add new subway lines. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't just dig a line easily. Well, oh, yeah, but this is these are design decisions, design patterns that, you know, at some point people made decisions, right? Yeah. And we, we're making those same decisions in our applications. What patterns are we going to reinforce? We, we make these same decisions in the tech industry. Like simply the fact that React has become such a, a massive thing like it it's like one pattern reinforced another reinforced another reinforced yeah. another and now we have you know these react based apps and whether that's good or bad is maybe another discussion but that that and then it, we can extrapolate where will we go from here because it it's not like uh it's not like things don't always just take a hard left turn often they just you just keep continue to add complexity on top of the pattern you have Mm -hmm. and i think yeah it's just interesting to think about that stuff and and going back to you know the way transistor works (laughs) i mean we have like i don't know i want to say 10 main screens maybe and even that, like we were, we were looking at how we might refactor the UI, like clean up the the interface in a way that is, you know, better or whatever, like for mm. the user. Even with just ten pages, changing things, <laughs> going like in a different direction, like saying, "Oh, let's amalgamate these two screens and then move it over here, and then let's change this UI." Like the pattern we started with, which was kind of just like, okay, well, we need to build something, and yeah. Cards Against Humanity was our first customer, so we kind of like built it for them, and then, and and you brought on brought old patterns from the app that you'd built before, and and we applied some of those patterns, yeah. and then and, you have these yeah screens with like thirty input fields on it. You're just like, <laughs> well, just, I guess we'll just add something here instead of thinking about 
a new context for all this stuff and splitting it up. Yeah, and it's tricky because you can introduce a new pattern, but human beings really, even bad patterns, they get they get attached to. Like, like you know, like JavaScript is like not a great language, but introducing something new to replace JavaScript just has not happened. Right. And so now we're stuck with it, and it's gonna, and now it's getting reinforced at a different scale. But JavaScript, that, yeah, JavaScript as a language is actually kind of great now. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, see, there you go. But anyway, the, I think that the principle still stands, and it, it's interesting to think about both in our businesses and, I mean, this is kind of a continuation even of what we were talking about last time and even a continuation of what we were talking about at the, at the top of the episode, which is like right now you're feeling a little bit down because it's gray. Mm-hmm. And there's this idea of like, well, what uh, patterns can I implement now? And some of those might be more complex than others. Like you could get one of those sad lamps. You could uh, start taking all sorts of supplements. You could, um, you, you know, you could use calm on the tropical theme or whatever. Mm, Uh, But there may be a simpler solution, which is, uh, I don't know, like Austin is sunny this time of year. So I'm just going to drive to Austin or fly to Austin or I was hoping there might be a, a little cl- a better climate <laughs> option, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive yeah. south and I'll run. I'll just run there. Just run there. See, that's the yeah. That's no that, no yeah, carbon yeah. footprint. Exactly. It'll just take a long time, but I'll get there and I'll be in shape. So that's true. That's true. <laughs> you should get one of those uh, Wolfram. The Wolfram. Uh, have you seen the Wolfram dudes? Uh, little. <laughs> I, I think you mentioned that before. <laughs> I'll post it in the show notes, but he's got like this this harness that he uses to walk around with his computer all day. So he tries to like do most of his work outside now. <laughs> that would be amazing. We get you like one of those harnesses and you're like jogging down like the interstate, like working on transistor stuff. <laughs> Can you imagine that? But maybe that's the simpler way to go. Right. Maybe it's worth doing. I think, yeah, interesting. Uh, folks, I'd... We've been getting a lot of feedback last few episodes. So if you want to talk to us about this topic, if this resonates with you at all, if you disagree, if you think uh, you know something we said isn't right, reach out to us at Build Your SaaS, at John Buddha, at M I Justin. Go to transistor.fm and talk to us in the chat. You can email us at shows at transistor.fm. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think. John, we have two new patreon supporters oh, why don't nice. uh why don't we thank everybody yeah thanks everyone and especially the new the new supporters here um mason hensley Ooh, this is gonna be tough yeah i think it's i think it's a is a it a yeah. silent j a yeah, yeah i think Borja, i think it's a yeah borjas solar borja solar <laughs> solar solar it's probably solar solar uh Bor- borja solar if Reach you're out listening if that's not right yeah, just let us know. And it, it's especially helpful like because we want to say your names right. So if, if you have a pronunciation that you want to just send us, yeah, send it over. Because a lot of people probably say Borgia Solar. Yeah. Yes. So if that's not it, let us know. Uh, we also have Ward Sandler, Eric Lima, James Sowers, Travis Fisher, Matt Buckley, Russell Brown, Evandro Sassi, Preti Yumna Schimbecker, Noah Prail, Robert Simplicio, Colin Gray, Josh Smith, Ivan Krakovic, Brian Ray, Shane Smith, Austin Loveless, Simon Bennett, Michael Sitver, Paul Jarvis and Jack Ellis, Dan Buda, Darby Frey, Samori Augusto, Dave Young, Brad from Canada, Sammy Schuchert, Mike Walker, Adam Devander, Dave Junta. Junta! And Kyle Fox from GetRewardful.com. Thanks, everybody. And uh, I was going to, I had a few things. I, I, Matt Buckley, every time you say Matt Buckley, I think the image that comes to my mind, what, what image comes to your mind? Matt Buckley? Yeah. Uh, Do you think of anything? No. I think of Jeff Buckley. Oh, okay. So I'm always picturing like a musician. He is a good musician. Yeah. Did you but see I, the movie about him or his dad? About his dad? No. Oh, it's great. There's a documentary about him? No, it's a fictional, well, it's a, movie they made 
It's oh. A film, not a documentary, about him, but also his dad, because his dad was a musician. Okay. I'll uh, look for it. We can post it in the show notes. I forget the name of it. Is it Greetings from Tim Buckley? Possibly. Okay. We'll, we'll look that up. Uh, and then the only other thing I was going to say was I uh, got a nice email from Colin Gray. So thanks for yeah. emailing us. Thanks, Colin. Colin. Yeah. And we will see you folks next week.